Hey, what's going on, LOC community? Me and Clint just got back from Contact in the Desert yesterday. I just wanted to make a video and show you guys some of the things we experienced and the people we got to talk to and just uh, what an amazing time it was. And to be honest, I was very impressed with the age range, I guess you could say. A lot of people, you know, younger. Um, it was really cool to see so many young people come together um, just with open minds and not just be you know the older generation which is what we thought it would be um, amazing people all the way around from the presenters to the staff the volunteers uh, and the people attending uh, it's just a a beautiful place and Joshua Tree is a very beautiful place as well very special place too um, yeah it's just uh, it's mind-blowing to know that one of our first events happens to be this and you know this is definitely the things that me and Clint both enjoy you know Clint with the you know control conspiracy aspect and me with you know Robert Paval talking about Egypt and Graham Hancock talking about ancient civilizations and just uh, definitely was right up our alley. Um, got to meet Brad Olson who we had on the podcast a few weeks ago. Uh, we got to talk to a lot to Laura Eisenhower as well, who uh, I'm going to try to get an interview with at some point this week, and um, <laughs> just an amazing time. So I've got some film footage that I would like to show you from some of the panels and things like that, some still shots from some of the people, um, and to me by far the highlight of the entire weekend was having a consciousness discussion with Graham Hancock and uh, getting our picture taken with him. So uh, <laughs> that was definitely a highlight, it's kind of a highlight of my life as well. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and you know anything is possible just know that if there is any one thing the past two months have proven to me it's that if you have good intention and you work towards a goal it can happen uh, the story for this is just crazy you know we applied for press passes months ago we did not you know receive anything back about the press passes and I won a contest and got a free ticket and I got in touch with a lady by the name of Susan Von Segern. Susan, you are my hero. Thank you so much. Uh, we actually got to spend some time with her on Sunday morning as well and very, very awesome, awesome person and, you know, very similar to us in, in mindset and train of thought and it's just very cool to see people in the business world, you know, have this kind of attitude and this mindset. So, uh, Susan, it was a pleasure meeting you, talking with you, and I hope we can work together again one day. Um, we would love to help you out in any way possible since you helped us out so much. Um, so, yeah, just enjoy the video, enjoy the pictures, and uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Without you guys watching this content, we wouldn't be here. So, I appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you have a great week ahead. And uh, there will be a lot of content pushed out over the next few days. So you'll be able to ex experience Contact in the Desert with us. So much love, LOC. Thank you, guys. Oh, I hope you enjoy the background as well. found it was very fitting since we went to an alien convention. So, ha. <laughs> there is no reason for any of these things to become so popular and that these things can remain on television without the eventuality of contact. So I think that we are moving and have, we are really going by leaps and bounds towards a direction that will be amazing. Can, can I just add on, on that? If I, if I understand the disclosure movement correctly, the, the view is that figures in our governments 
are in contact with extraterrestrials, but they're not revealing this to us. Well, what I want to know is why are the extraterrestrials talking to the assholes who run our government? Why are they talking to us directly? You know, if these extraterrestrials are hanging out with these government guys, I'm not sure I even want to know them. I'd rather deal with a fellow human. Almost on the same level like the Matrix, so to speak. And while personally I love discussing the topic, I'm on the fence because it would make it a bit weird if this is all a simulation. Because what's real then? If what about sex? Our sex? Yeah. Not the simulation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think so. They, is that a simulation too? I don't think so, right? I think the. Well, if that's I, the I think case, they, I'm I, living in a simulated world. <laughs> can, can I just say, I think that the argument is, it, it goes beyond that. The, the argument is that we are now living in a society where we are, we are seeing incredible, rapid advances in virtual reality. We, I mean, really, it's getting very, very good. And that it may, if that pro process proceeds at the rate it has been proceeding for the next 100 or 200 years, or perhaps less, we are going to get virtual reality which is so real that you can even drill into it with scientific tests. You can have sex with it. You can make babies with it. You can go to the disco with it. You believe it's real. It's so real. But actually, at the end of the day, when our game time is over, we come out into the game room and we compare notes. That's the suggestion. So it's possible we are in a simulated world. It's because extremely possible we that we're in a simulated world. How would we know? Our scientific tests drill into it. They say, no, this is material reality. But when we get into the heart of material reality, what do we find? Electrons and atoms, nothing. Just nothing in this, in this table. It's all, it's all illusory. So this is a possibility, and definitely one worth inquiring into, alongside all the other ones. Hi, everybody. I love these panels. I love sitting next to these folks. Um, I mean, this is, you know, spirituality isn't, you know, something, you know, foreign to us or something external or something we need to attain or sign up for. It's who we are. It's, it, we, we're born that way. It's, it's our natural organic state, you know. Being a multidimensional being is, you know, part of the quest, you know, to, to know the self. I mean, and, and I've always been you know, an adventurer. My background's in wilderness expedition leadership, and I'm so grateful I spent so many years in the wilderness because it sharpened my intuition and made me really sensitive to programmings and BS, and I was already, you know, really sensitive as a child. I was downloaded everything about my mission starting at the age of four, five, six years old. I had to consider myself living a double life because there's no way, nobody was talking about ascension, you know, way back when. Um, I, I'm not changed a bit. I'm still talking about the same stuff. I just have different terminology. So I think, you know, at this critical phase, you know, we have to understand that everything is about initiations. Our culture doesn't initiate us. Our school systems, even our parents, um, we're not in that sort of community like we see in indigenous cultures where there's rites of passage, you know, where we learn to really honor the sacred energies of life, you know, including sexual energy and relationships. And, you know, it's, it's basically what you get from the television, what those distortions are. And, you know, we have to understand, you know, we signed up for the tree of knowledge, but knowledge has been targeted with mind control. And these programmings are so detrimental that it blows my mind that there's not an inner voice that is creating that red alert saying, hey, that's an artificial timeline. Hey, that's transhumanism and that's going to compromise your soul and potentially put you in a position where you've lost contact with your soul. You know, and when you're in the wilderness for long enough, it's like you, you get so tuned into how to survive and how to work in a group that the, the most critical thing to survival is creating harmony, listening to each other, making sure everybody feels good and taken care of. And, and what the wildlife does and what the elements do in response to integrity and just being a good person, you get that instant reflection when you're in nature. You don't get that in the matrix when you're watching television, when you're buying you know, into the false programmings, when you're following you know, the model of reward punishment based on you know, how great your negative ego is and how much you can stomp on others and take advantage of others. So we're you know, being trained to be total schmucks. And, it's just ridiculous and it's insulting. I wake up, I'm not getting used to this at all. You'd think like, okay, you know, I'm insulted every morning. I'm just like, oh, I can't believe I'm here. If it wasn't for you guys, I don't think I could handle it. I mean, I love you all so much. I didn't think I was gonna make it the last couple months and I thought like I had a grip on things, uh-uh. But what I've 
feeling is let's embrace spirituality not as this external but as an inner exploration you know a, a, a true gift to honor our own self-worth and 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 you know the gift of being divine beings i mean this is something to celebrate how can we switch this off and not you know be be open and 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 and, and liberated and inspired by all that we have yet to discover i mean we're not tapping into anything we have 12 strand dna 12 stargates on this planet that we're directly linked to but then we go into 13 14 15 and then we start to connect with the trinity we start to connect to the zero point that connects us back to andromeda and this is all within our chakras that we do this so we have to help initiate each other we're working with chiron the wounded healer more than any other sort of force or asteroid from our galactic history we're in rehabilitation we have to hold hands we have to love each other we have to support each other the most spiritual and beautiful thing that we can do is to have you know compassion and just care about one another's well-being you know it doesn't come down to how much we can recite this or that you know it's just simply treating others as you wanted to be treated and um, preserving the sacred energies of life honoring this earth and being grateful for the breath that we draw every day and knowing that if we can just be consistent in this nature will initiate us into unbelievable experiences because ascension is wired into the cosmos and wired into the core of this earth as a seed this is an ascension planet and has been it's wired into us all we need to do is give ourselves plenty of sunlight and water the magic <coughs> will happen you know it's encoded in us we don't have to strategize it we don't have to stress about it we have to just hold space for each other and purify our negative ego because the earth will respond to us if we want to clean up the environment let's clean up our own inner elements and be inspired by this because it's beautiful Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you. To close this video, I just want to say thank you to everybody who helped us have a wonderful weekend uh, at Contact in the Desert. From the PR lady, Susan Von Sagan, who I mentioned earlier, uh, Dr. Dream, who is our, our good buddy, uh, and we've had an interview with him, so thank you for your hospitality, Laura Eisenhower. It was amazing listening to you. Um, you have just a mind-blowing point of view, and your knowledge is just wow. So uh, thank you for spending time chatting with us. Um, Brad Olson, thank you for hanging with us over the weekend. It was an awesome, awesome time, especially going to George and Harry's birthday party with you. That was a blast. Um, God, who else? Oh, Trisha McCannon. Uh, we did a podcast with Trisha McCannon, and I think you guys will love her just as much as we did. Uh, good old Southern gal, so I felt kind of at home with her. You know, wanted to go eat some fried chicken and mac and cheese with her. <laughs> but, uh, oh, who else? Um, <clears throat> some of the people there, uh, Banked, Ryan, uh, who else? Rich, Josh, um, Martine, Daryl. Uh, all you guys were just amazing. It was a good time hanging out with you all. Uh, Warren, Courtney, um, we just met some really, really amazing people. And uh, I hope to work with you guys again at some point one day and help to change this world with you. So thank you all. I appreciate you. I appreciate the time you spent with us and the wisdom you shared with us. So... I hope you all enjoyed the video, and for anyone who's not, you know, a part of this on Facebook or Instagram, we are under Lords of Consciousness everywhere you go, so be sure to look us up, follow us, and uh, go for the ride with us. This is one heck of a journey, and I'm honored to be a part of it, so thank you all. Much love.